Hello and welcome to the PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Harditz, and today we continue our fantasy final series with a look at the GOAT, TV12, Tom freaking Brady, Super Bowl champion again. I did not see it coming. I thought, hey, maybe this guy, 43 years old, finally going to take something resembling a step back. Nope. You know, father time is undefeated, but Tom Brady is sure giving that man a hell of a run. So TV 12, I mean, my goodness, you look back at his career and it's honestly absurd. I didn't even remember how good some of these years were because he, you know, wins the Super Bowl 2001. He comes in for Bledsoe after just two games. 2002, he doesn't make the playoffs. And to me, that was always apparently kind of the down year with it. No, not really, people. Yeah, he only he went 9-7. and seven. It's the only time other than his one game, 2008, where he didn't produce a double-digit win record. Patriots were still able to do that in 2008. 2002 is the only time they didn't do it. And Brady still threw a league-high 28 touchdown passes in his one season where he didn't lead them to double-digit wins. Now, pretty comical that 28 passing touchdowns uh, led the league back in 2002. That's kind of how the game was back then. It was quite a, quite a bit more physical. I wouldn't even say it resembles kind of the way football is played nowadays. And just the fact that that's Brady's floor over the years uh, in terms of, you know, wins, loss, then look at the stats. Absolutely wild. So moving on to 2020, first year with the Buccaneers, you know, needs to prove that 2019 was a fluke. Yeah, Tom did just that and did it in style. PFF passing grade, he was number two among 44 quarterbacks with at least 100 dropbacks. QB rating, he was 10th. Big time throw rate, he was 8th. Turnover worthy play rate, he was 1st. Yards per attempt, he was tied for 14th. Adjust completion rate, only somewhat negative at 27th. But even that, it wasn't even something that Brady necessarily did wrong. It was just more of a just factor that kind of came from the way he was throwing passes. I mean, Brady and my guy, Drew Locke, tied for the league's highest average target depth last season at 9.7 yards. Brady was chucking that rock and I think he even mentioned I don't know if he mentioned it I think it was like Romo on a broadcast where he had talked to Brady during the week but basically with the Patriots they were going first guy there James White's open let's get get the ball to him let's pick up six yards Edelman first you know slant open let's go pick up the eight yards move on to the next play with the Buccaneers Bruce Arians no risk it no biscuit apparently what they want their quarterbacks to do is take that freaking deep shot if it's there we're trying to score a touchdown every single play not just move the chains and it took Brady a little bit to get into that state of mind that's why we I think saw that brief dry spell during the middle of the season when Antonio Brown got into the picture and we just saw Brady have that like 18 or 19 straight you know pass attempt 20 yards downfield stretch where he couldn't complete anything just realized people this was never due to his is, you know, arm turning into a noodle like other guys. Uh, one of you on Twitter put together this, uh, you know, things that kind of pissed me off and caused me to rant on this podcast, which I thought was great. And one of those was when people questioned Tom Brady's arm strength. So I'm not going to go on my usual spiel. I'm sure you all have heard it before. Just, you know, realize you can check out the article on pff.com. I have plenty of instances and a nice little video of him still looking very much like a strong armed assassin. I mean, there's an awesome video. Say what you want about Brady. He, whoever does his social media is absolutely fantastic. They had him at the beach chucking a ball up and literally taking out the moon. Uh, so arm strength, certainly still not a question for Brady despite being 44 come August. And yeah, so we'll see. But with the wild part to me, we have to worry about the age. I, I guess we do because... You know, it affect any other quarterback. Not Brady, apparently, but we need to worry about it a little bit. But the wild thing is that Brady could theoretically be better in his second year in the system because historically, we haven't seen quarterbacks in their first year of Bruce Arians perform anywhere close to that. I mean, coming into this year, one of the reasons I was a little bit down on Brady was because each of Andrew Luck, Carson Palmer, and Jameis Winston tallied 40 turnover-worthy plays in their first season with Bruce Arians. Brady finished with just 15 turnover-worthy plays in 20 games. And again, on a, just a rate, using the percentage of your dropbacks, he was actually number one in the entire league. Absolute madness. So the one issue for Brady last year was pressure. When he actually was able to get knocked off his spot, that was when we saw him look his age really the only time all year. He actually had the seventh largest discrepancy in the league in terms of, you know, being kept clean, yards per attempt versus under pressure, yards per attempt. And, you know, wasn't exactly in great company there. Overall, uh, Drew Locke was the single worst quarterback in terms of drop off under pressure versus kept clean. Then it went Goff, Mullins, Tannehill, Mayfield, Burrow, and then Tom Brady. So not great. Something we would kind of expect, though, from a quarterback who's never exactly been mobile and now is uh, less than ever with how old he's getting. Just with that in mind, it really didn't matter all that much, people. The Buccaneers 
years posted the league's fourth lowest pressure rate in 2020, and they finished with PFF's fifth best offensive line. And now everybody, all 22 Super Bowl starters are back. Absolutely absurd. You know, shout out Buccaneers GM Jason uh, Litch for just making that happen. And yeah, Bruce Aarons is back too. OC Byron Leftwich, defensive coordinator Todd Bowles. Continuity matters in any sport, and nobody has more of it than the Buccaneers ahead of 2021. So once again, PFF, I told you guys they finished with the fifth best offensive line last year. Looking ahead to 2021, we have them ranked fifth again. They added some extra depth. They brought in, you know, Notre Dame offensive tackle, Robert Hainsey in the third round, got their swing tackle back. And I mean, it wouldn't be shocking to anyone, I think, if Tristan Wirfs uh, just takes even a larger step forward. I mean, he was already, even as a rookie, one of the best overall tackles in the league. And I mean, it would just make sense if as he gets more experience, he continues to take steps forward. So offensive line looks great. And he'll once again be throwing to anyone's idea of a top three, if not top one group of receivers and tight ends. Mike Evans, only player in NFL history to begin their career with at least 1,000 receiving yards in seven consecutive seasons. Chris Goblin's back. I mean, we were expecting him, remember, to maybe go on the Packers or just one of these wide receiver free agency teams. They never let him get away, and I'm expecting bigger things ahead. I mean, he dealt with. He had a concussion at the end of week one. He had a grade two hamstring strain, and then he fractured his left finger. Despite all that, he finished the year in 16 games, including the playoffs, 81 catches, over 1,000 yards, and eight scores. I mean, that was with the drop field postseason run. Just realize we've never seen this be a problem with Goblin before. Since he entered the league, he has the sixth highest rate of catching his catchable targets among 129 qualified wide receivers. Wouldn't be shocked at all if Goblin, you know, gets re kind of reacclimates himself as a legit, you know, top 10 real life receiver in 2021. We also have Antonio Brown, who led all Buccaneers wide receivers in PFF receiving grade and yards per out run, dropped just one of his 54 catchable targets, including the playoffs. Brady loves this guy. I mean, one of my favorite stats I found this offseason cool new pff metric called threat rate all it is is targets per uh route run and with that only Devonte adams and for whatever reason braxton barrios were targeted on a higher percentage of their routes than brown after that we have scotty miller who absolutely knows and he caught eight of his nine catchable targets thrown at least 20 yards last field i mean he is arguably the single best you know handcuff wide receiver in the entire league if he gets out there he's gonna be getting you know fancy friendly deep balls and even if he's not starting he should still get one or two a game tyler Johnson flashed as a rookie. He's someone that people remain high on kind of deeper in the dynasty land. And then the tight ends, I mean, Gronk, two touchdowns, Super Bowl. OJ Howard was out targeting and out producing Gronk to start the year. And he still has the highest average of yards per target since he entered the league in 2017. And Cam freaking Brate, like this guy just keeps balling. I know we haven't liked him over the years because he keeps OJ Howard on the bench. And we've been, we were hoping for this breakout from OJ all these years. But since he came into the league in 2014, Cam Brate has a 47.5% touchdown conversion rate on targets inside a 20 yard line. Highest mark among 73 qualified players, whether it's Jameis, whether it's Brady, Cam Bray has been awesome at catching touchdowns inside the red zone. And then finally, the one spot this passing game could upgrade at the running back position, they got the mustache man himself, Giovanni Bernard, to take over for Leonard Fournette and particularly Ronald Jones. I mean, last year, Gio, even though he wasn't, I don't think, the same sort of monster he was in his uh, you know previous kind of prime years in Cincy, still was the 16th ranked running back among 46 qualified guys in yards per route run. So perhaps Brady has even found his mustache version of James White. So with all this said, PFF Lily stat, it's, it's a little bit down on Brady. I would just say as much as Tom Brady is still a great real life quarterback and he is, and great's probably even understating it. And last year he was still a great fantasy quarterback too. He's benefited over the years in terms of total rankings a lot from playing a full 16 games. If we look at Brady, just in terms of fantasy points per game since 2013, he's been to QB 18, QB 11, QB 2, QB 3, and then QB 7, QB 17 in 2018, QB 16 in 2019, most recently QB 11 in fantasy points per game. So I would just say, you know, it's... I'm guilty of this sometimes too, where we use a full on overall fantasy points for game marks and not every, every time fantasy points, uh, excuse me, I use the full on fantasy ranks. Sometimes fantasy points per game is the better metric you want to use. So I'm guilty of that sometimes. It's not always perfect. You know, Marcus Mariota was like the QB one or two last year because he started one game. You kind of want to take away those guys from the list. But I would just say Brady, as much as I am not doubting his real life ability, we still have a guy where if he's not going to score three goal line QB sneaks every year, then we're going to have an issue with him really ascending into the top five fantasy quarterbacks. So he's my QB 11. 
11 uh, going this year, right where you finished last year in fantasy points per game. I have my head of guys like Tannehill, Stafford, Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield. He's right there in the same tier, though. Mix of upside with a demonstrated floor. I'm right there next to Joe Burrow. Right now, I'm leaning more on Burrow just for volume. And I think uh, with that Bengals defense still being awful, we just see them in a little bit more shootout mode, but wouldn't really disagree with anyone that wants to bump up Brady into that top 10, top 9, uh, potentially. So Brady, you know, we, we've learned over the years, quit betting against this guy. Uh, we'll see if he can keep on keeping on for another year in 2021 and maybe even more. He keeps telling us he wants to play until he's 45, uh, perhaps. Perhaps 2021 is just another, uh, you know, ring. If he can get eight rings, I mean, it's just absurd what this guy's done. Maybe even the be not the beginning of the end if he comes back in 2022. So we'll see what's what. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to PFF Fantasy Football Pod. If you enjoy it, please check out the rest of our PFF Podcast Network, which covers everything NFL, college, and fantasy football. And also, people, please check out our PFF uh, 2021 Best Ball Draft Kit. Tiered rankings, the projections, the targetable stacks, the season's favorable matchups, the only resource you'd ever need to wreak havoc across best ball formats all season long if you're going to do best ball please do it over at underdog fantasy underdog's got everything including season long and playoff best ball go to underdog fantasy and deposit ten dollars using promo code pff and get a free pff edge and subscription that's promo code pff draft now at underdog fantasy all right people i'm hyped recorded four of these today should be good through tuesday and i am going to long beach island tomorrow I'm gonna to get my sun on get my tan on unfortunately i can't get tan i'm way too white it's embarrassing. I'll probably get sunburnt, but I will still enjoy laying on the beach. So it, it was funny. I went to uh, the PFF headquarters, uh, you know, to help out the draft show. I was on TV with some of the guys and all that. And we were streaming it from the website, whatever. You know, I was off the side and we had makeup people come in. This woman uh, comes up to me, professional makeup artist, and she starts kind of dabbing stuff on my face. I don't freaking know what she was using. And uh, she's like, oh, honey, like your, your cheeks are so rosy and your lips are so red. It looks like you're wearing lipstick. And I was like, well, ouch. Okay, fair. But uh, I, I've noticed this over the years. I do have rosy cheeks and my lips do seem a little red. And she tells me I need to put on this like Eucerin st lotion stuff because I'm just constantly sunburnt. And I was like, well, damn constantly somber i didn't quite put that together so that would have kind of explained uh why my face has looked uh, a little funky all these years so maybe one day i'll shed that you know face suited for radio label and really uh get moving on so it is what it is i'm not gonna worry about that for next week just gonna worry about chilling on the beach side but don't worry we'll continue to have pff fantasy football podcast episodes out every single day corresponding articles over at pff.com and my 100 questions in a 100 day series as well so please check that out i mean hardest has been the pff fantasy football podcast love you all and until next time take care everybody